what do you make of these promises that are being made by both presidential candidates? I mean, they're heavy in terms of expenditure, but we've also seen an attempt to raise the debt ceiling. In fact, the Senate was discussing that just yesterday. Uh, to be honest with me, and uh, why is it uh, the worry is uh, where is this money coming from? And the question has been uh, when we look at the history of uh, the promises that are actually made uh, during the campaigns, uh, paints a very grim picture in the sense that uh, what uh, normally political parties do is promise, but when it comes to the implementation, it becomes quite a challenge. Then we hear a number of excuses ranging from the economy, the pandemic, and all that. I think if we can speak from experience looking at the Jubilee Party the last 10 years, uh, a number of organizations, uh, and us included as Muzalendo, have done an analysis of uh, um, the manifesto that, for example, Jubilee uh, prepared, uh, and the last one being the last five years. And I can tell you for free these things that we're talking about when it comes to corruption, uh, when it comes to the welfare of the people, those things that were promised in that constitution, 80% of the promises that lie in that manifesto uh, remain undone today. So when I hear the, the promises, I sometimes shudder and I wonder what will it take for them to promise and deliver at the same time. So uh, for me, we, we look at these promises we, and uh, take them with a pinch of salt, considering the history we've had in terms of the implementation of manifestos, because then we don't see follow-up programs coming after the manifestos have done. If you talk about corruption, you would expect that uh, you will go back to the institutions that deal with corruption, ask them, uh, what are the challenges? You will go back to, for example, and say, uh, when was the last time Kenya was audited? And the last audit uh, for Kenya, I think the cycle, the UNCAC cycle, uh, that was done in Kenya was in what was in 2018, if I remember very well. So the uh, the United Nations Convention Against Corruption and it is auditors have already done a very good work. Yeah. So you don't need really something from the blues to pick up the process. You just need to go back and pick the blueprint, put that in your legislative agenda in the House yeah. and put that in your various policies that you come up with. But we've rarely seen that happen. Okay.